Hi, this is your friendly librarian. Today we will be learning about citing sources. Citing sources? What does that mean? It basically deals with plagiarism. You know, the practice of taking someone's work and passing it off as your own? This will get you into trouble. Preventing plagiarism is the key. Let's say your teacher has given you a research topic on presidents. You choose George Washington. You had heard that good old George had wooden teeth. You find a website on his teeth and you copy and paste right into your paper. That's plagiarism. That's a big no-no. Citing also makes us stick to the facts. If you can't prove it, don't use it. Readers might want to confirm your facts, so not making up creative stories in research is important. That's where citing sources comes in. To cite means to tell. A source is a place for information. Get it? We are telling others where we get our information. But here's the deal. There are specific information that we need when we cite and a specific way we have to cite. You ask why? So citations are the same everywhere you go. Today, we are going to cite three resources that you may encounter. A book, a website, and a database. Because you know I'm all about those books, about those books. Start reading. Yes, we get loads of information from books. Let's face it, half a library is nonfiction. When citing a book, you can get all the necessary information from two places, the title page and the copyright page. The title page is one of the first pages in a book, and you guessed it, it has the title. But it also has the author, the publisher, and where the book was published. The copyright page is trickier. It could be right after that title page, or even at the end of the book. From here you get the year the book was published. Be careful. If a book has two dates, use the newest one. And another thing you should know. There is a lot of punctuation in a citation. Let's start. Author first. This is always true, no matter what you are citing. The only time you don't use the author first is when the author is unknown. Start with the author's last name, a comma, author's first name, and a period. Told you about that punctuation. Then we write the title and another period. Finally, the city, a colon, the publisher, a comma, and the year, and a period. Here is an example. I looked into Destiny, and lo and behold, I found a book called George Washington's Teeth. Wow, what a find. The author is Deborah Chandra. The book was published in New York by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. And looking at the copyright page, I found the copyright of 2003. So what goes first? The last name, Chandra, a comma, then her first name, Deborah, a period. Then the title, and a period. New York, a colon, Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux, comma, 2003, period. And it goes as if you were writing sentences. Whew, that's done. Let's see if you can do it. Take a book from the table and see if you can cite one. Next, let's look at a website. These are full of information. Please be careful, however. Not every website is good for all students. So let's start. For these, you need the following. The author. FYI, these may be hard to find. It could be a person. It could be an organization. But remember, if you can't find it, just skip it. Then you need the page title. This might be different from the website name. Look for the largest text on the page. Then you need the website name. Now here comes the hardest part, the URL. This is also known as the website address. And yes, you have to write the whole thing. Finally, you end the citation with the date you looked at the website. If that is today, you write today's date. Now here's the example. You are going to notice that I'm now putting in that punctuation. It is from a site called George Washington's Mount Vernon. 
A group called the Mount Vernon Ladies Association published it. How did I know? I looked for the copyright symbol. The largest text is The Trouble with Teeth. I am guessing this is the name of the page because the site's name is George Washington's Mount Vernon. Now the URL. Hey, this one's simple. www.mountvernon.org And finally, today's date. Let's put it together. Author, period. Page title in quotation marks, then a period. Site name, period. URL, period. Date, period. Second one done. Now let's see if you can do it. Take a slip of paper that lists a website from the table and see if you can cite it. We are on the last resource, and guess what? It is very similar to citing a website. Now you go to the databases that our school has gotten for you. Thinking it through, it looks like WorldBook might be the way to go. For this, you need the author, the title of the article, the database name, and the date you looked at it. Here's a little hint. Many databases already have the citations somewhere on the page. You can write those down or follow these formats. Author name, last name first, and a period. Article name in quotations, and a period. Database name, period. And the date you looked at it, ending with a, you guessed it, a period. So here's my example. I found this article in World Book, and the title is at the top. Hey, notice that if it's about a person, it's last name first. I found the author's name at the bottom, and I know it's World Book Online. Let's put it together. Author first. Chase, comma, Philander, period. Hmm, George, comma, Washington. Ooh, notice those quotation marks. Then a period. World Book One Line, period. Today's date, and you guessed it, a period. Wow, I'm all done. Let's see if you can do this. Take a paper from the table and try to cite a database. Congratulations, you've done it. Remember, you must cite for all research projects and create a Works Cited page for each. Have a great day and go for it. Good luck. Baltimore County Public Schools, 2015.